Hello, <clears throat> I have a plaque. Uh, I know that from a CIMT. It's an ultrasound technology in my carotid artery. Um, many people do. In fact, once you get uh, 60 years old, most um, Americans, most uh, humans have plaque in their arteries. Now, <clears throat> but if you look at it from a public health perspective, we can't tell if I'm going to have a heart attack tomorrow or I won't have one. Uh, same thing with every, every other human that's got uh, plaque. Now, I, I feel confident that I know that I won't, but <clears throat> that has to do with inflammatory markers and systemic issues. But let's just think about it. And there's been a lot of focus on this area. It's called the vulnerable plaque theory. So, <clears throat> despite knowing that many people have plaques, atherosclerosis, we're not able to predict when somebody's about to have an event. The ability to identify plaques that are about to blow would have huge opportunities. The, just think, if we could say, we know uh, grandma's got a little bit of hardening of the arteries, but we just had her scanned yesterday. None of them, all of those arteries are stable and we're good to go. Or we had her scan yesterday and she does have this vulnerable plaque. We, we're taking her in, we're getting her a stent right there and she's gonna be okay. Uh, actually, there've been a lot of efforts there have been some companies developed specific to that. Um, we're going to talk about those today. This is uh, Ford Brewer, PrevMed, heart attack, stroke, cancer, disability, dementia prevention. Um, <clears throat> it's not as hard as it sounds, but it does take a lot of discipline to do all the stuff we need to do to prevent those things. And sure enough, we're adding decades to people's lives. Now, <clears throat> We're, what we're talking about here is a plaque. A plaque getting, um, this is an artery by the way, for those of you who've not seen this. Um, this was a patient that died of a heart attack. The, this is the intima layer, and this is the cap over a, over a uh, plaque. This was what we call a hot plaque. It was like this. It, the immune system happened to attack this area not this area or this area, but this area. It, do, it did what it, it usually does. It gets an, antibodies involved, immune cells, they release enzymes and they start to digest this plaque. They turn it into a hot, what we call a hot liquid. Now it's not the plaque that causes the heart attack, uh, as in the vast majority of them, four out of five heart attacks and strokes. It's the clot. This black thing is not plaque, it is the clot. When hot plaque touches blood, it forms a clot. The majority of this clot, by the way, broke off, uh, went downstream and killed the patient. We're gonna come back and mention that at the end of this because, again, there have been companies that were developed specifically to find those hot plaques. Again, the ability to look for to do a scan for grandma and see, see if she's got any vulnerable plaques. This is Jim Molnar. James Molnar was the, uh, I think, founder uh, and CEO of a company called Infrared DX. DX is sh medical shorthand for diagnosis. So what they were doing was using infrared technology. They inserted this probe into the patient's arteries just like a cardiologist would insert um, a stent, take it up to the area that the uh, he's going to place the stent in the artery and then place it. But instead of a stent at the end, he's got an infrared probe. That infrared probe uh, is supposed to detect whether or not a plaque is hot or ready to blow. I'm not going to go through all the details around this, but this has a little, this is talking a little bit more about the technology itself. This is the, uh, the images that, are com that come out of the infrared DX studies. Again, we know from vascular imaging studies that we can tell if a plaque is developing that ne hot necrotic core. Necrotic in medical terminology just means dead tissue. Uh, so again, it's that hot inflamed tissue. We know from imaging studies that um, we can tell when the cap on that plaque is getting, um, 
is getting thin. Now this is Infrared DX, uh, DX's website and their leadership team. Uh, I looked it up and I don't see Dr. Molnar. So I thought, you know, well, maybe Dr. Molnar left. Uh, wonder what he's doing. So I looked him up on LinkedIn and he's obviously not a big LinkedIn guy. The only page that he has there doesn't have a picture. It just mentions it's obviously outdated. It's saying he's the uh, CEO of uh, Infrared DX, which he's not at this point. So it sounds like maybe something didn't work. Uh, maybe we, uh, another bunch of uh, dashed hopes and dreams. Well, if you start reading a little bit more about the articles and the debate around the vulnerable plaque, this is in the Journal of the American Cardi um, College of Cardiology, uh, affectionately known as Jack, the myth of the vulnerable plaque. So they go on to talk about the myth of the vulnerable plaque, and one of the major proponents on that side of the debate is a fellow named Steve Nissen. Uh, Dr. Nissen is a cardiologist at the Cleveland Clinic, and he, uh, he is a major, major player in the research around uh, IVUS, intravascular ultrasound imaging. He's done a lot, and in fact, recently published a study where he showed that once we decrease the, uh, the necrotic plaque, uh, the necrotic components of the plaque, uh, we can decrease cholesterol, we can decrease size of a plaque, we can stabilize a plaque, and a patient's not going to have a heart attack. If you look at some of my other, um, other videos, that's exactly what is going on with me. I had stuff like this going on before. I've taken the correct things. I've managed my metabolism and I've gotten rid of this hot plaque and I've gotten rid of a major component of the LDL um, in my plaque. So my plaque's stable. I'm not worried about having a heart attack. So let's get back and just ask the question again. So what happened to the vulnerable plaque theory. It's a systemic issue. There is no specific one plaque that we can hit and then we're good. Um, it's sort of like uh, we're surrounded. We can't hit one plaque because there we've got what 6,000 miles, 60,000 miles? I don't remember. It's only a factor of 10. Miles and miles, a lot of them of arteries in our body. And plaque susceptibility, plaque vulnerability is a metabol metabolism issue. It's not a local specific plaque issue. So like our, our friend here says, you know what? We're surrounded. If it's not just one, we're surrounded. At least that simplifies our problem. And in fact, it does simplify our problem. Um, <clears throat> we can go chasing vulnerable plaque after vulnerable plaque with stents and other devices. But let's go back to, to mention this systemic thing. Remember I said I was going to mention this earlier? Again, out of those either 60,000 or 6,000 miles, doesn't matter to me, of arteries, in this one area where you had a hot plaque that killed the patient, you've got another hot plaque starting out of 60,000 miles, that, that's, not, that's not a, um, just, uh, that's an incredible, uh, either that's an incredible, incredibly low probability event, or, again, this is a systemic issue. So, it is simpler. You don't go in and continue to put stent after stent after stent. You manage your diabetes. You manage your weight, you manage your lipodystrophy, you manage your diabetes. And oh, by the way, did I say you manage your diabetes? In other words, we go to the metabolic risk factors for uh, stroke vulnerability, heart, uh, heart attack, plaque vulnerability, three quarters of which in our population is going to be diabetes related or pre-diabetes related, and you manage those. And then you can like me, be very comfortable that you're not about to have a heart attack or stroke. 
And if you manage that with your Aunt Tilly, she won't either. Thank you very much.